Hey, we're pulling. What's up? This is Jimfo from ReadyCheck Pull, and this is the Need to Know Guide for Normal and Heroic Mau. Mau. Again, we're just gonna name him Matt. We'll start by lusting on pull. Tanks will pull Matt to the center of the room while the rest of the raid spreads out around the boss. The tank mechanic is pretty standard. Taunt swap after every other Shadow Claw, or when the Shadow Wound's debuff has fallen off. Matt will occasionally target several players with Devour Magic, which does magic damage to any player in a radius after 6 seconds. When the debuff expires, it drops a purple pool that does stacking damage to anyone in it and drains their mana. But the pool also makes you immune to any other magic spell the boss cast. Now this is important because players will need to run into a pool whenever the boss casts Stygian Annihilation. If you aren't in a pool during this cast, you're probably dead. The boss will cast Dark Manifestation, which is just a pool that spawns an ad that needs to be tanked away from the boss. The default way to deal with these adds is going to be to drag them into a purple pool, which silences them and makes them immune to all forms of magic. Put all of your physical damage onto the ad and kill it as fast as possible. If you don't have enough physical damage, you'll want to go with option B, which is to keep the ad close to a pool and have all of your DPS, not only physical, switch to it as needed. When an ad starts to cast Dark Offering, drag it into a pool to interrupt the cast, and then bring it back out of the pool. If you can, try and avoid taunt swapping while an ad is out. The last important ability in Phase 1 is Black Wings, a super fast breath that's cast on a target which damages and knocks back everyone in a 40 yard range. When Matt reaches full mana, Phase 2 starts. Matt is now untankable, becomes a statue, and has a mana shield that needs to be destroyed in less than a minute. The raid will stack up behind Matt, stand there, and DPS. 100% of the damage you do to the shield is reflected back onto the player, which makes this part extremely heal intensive. To make things worse, every 6 seconds he'll consume 10% of his mana to increase his damage by 1% for the rest of the fight. Now this would suck if it wasn't for the orbs that spawn on the outside of the room. These orbs need to be exploded by running into them. Damage is reduced the further you are away from the explosion. If an orb reaches the boss, it'll consume it, restoring 20% of his mana. Have your tanks rotate running into the orbs away from the rest of the raid. That tank gets a 6 second debuff that they then need to drop off on top of the raid. This is huge because it increases mana regen by 150% and healing done by 50% for 8 seconds. <clears throat> Arcane mages. <clears throat> Lastly in phase 2, Matt would target a couple players with a circle debuff dealing damage and burning their mana. This needs to be taken 8 plus yards away from the raid and dispelled immediately. Phase 1 will start again when your raid breaks the mana shield. Rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. And that's the fight. Listen, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. These guides are so fun to make, but they take so much time. So please consider supporting us on Patreon. We definitely appreciate it.